Hey guys, Jeremy here with Something Simple. Thanks for joining today. Uh, I'm going to spend the next several videos focusing on breakfast items. Um, so the last video I made an Ethiopian dish called Injera Fit and today I'm going to make a Mexican dish called Rajas Poblano. Um, and, um, and that involves making a, a breakfast that consists of sauteed onions and poblano peppers. Um, and also today I have a special treat. I'm going to be making homemade tortillas from corn. Um, but before I get started, um, I wanted to just give a little background on why corn is so important to many Latin cultures. Um, and one of the ingredients that I'm using today is masa. And this is what we're going to be using to make the, the corn tortillas. Um, and I'm kind of a, a, a food nerd, so I like to give a little history about certain foods that um, many of us not be, may not be aware of. Um, so corn obviously was domesticated in Mesoamerica thousands of years ago. Um, but one of the complexities of corn involves a process called nixtamalization. And many of us may not be aware of, or may not be aware of how corn flour is made um, when it's used to make tortillas and tamales and things like that. Um, so just to give a little background about nixtamalization, um, when you hear that term, it's a process that um, refer it refers to a process of, for the preparation of corn in which the corn is soaked in, in an alkaline solution. So the importance of that is the the alkaline solution. Um, one, it removes toxins that might be um, in the corn from mycotoxin contaminated um, corn. Um, the process has been used in Mesoamerica for thousands of years, and I believe the first documented use of the process was about 1500 BCE. The process of nixtamalization not only improved the taste and texture of corn, but it also made the corn more, more nutritious because if you just eat plain corn by itself and you rely on corn as a major food source, it actually is not very nutritious. Your body can't absorb the niacin, which is one of the important B vitamins found in corn. Um, so when the nixtamalization process occurs, it actually makes the, the uh, niacin more bioavailable so your body can actually absorb those nutrients. Um, unfortunately, after corn was brought back from the New World, it was planted in Spain and from there it spread to other countries. And a lot of countries have come to rely on corn because it's easy to grow, doesn't require a lot of water, and usually the yields are pretty high. So countries like India, China, Africa, um, some of those countries have, have become reliant on corn as a major food source. Um, but unfortunately, when they consume large amounts of corn or rely on it as, as a major food source, it act actually can lead to some vitamin deficiency or de a disease called um, pellagra. And um, this is um, basically your body can't absorb the nutrients from the corn, so you're just basically eating something that's not nutritious, or your body can't absorb the, the nutrients and the vitamins from that food. Anyway, diseases aside, um, just another side note, the Mesoamerican diet um, really lacked major protein sources, kind of like we have today in our Western diet. Um, but thanks to the consumption of processed corn, beans, and squash, the Mesoamerican diet actually contained complete amino acids. So in essence, the Mesoamerican diet could potentially have been vegetarian, but they did supplement their diet with other, other protein, animal-based protein sources, but I won't go into that. Um, so another thing, if you ask any, if you have any Latino friends um, or family members, you can ask them about um, Las Tres Hermanas, or Three Sisters in, in English. Um, and this is a, a tradition I think that's gone, that goes back many generations, where when families grow their garden, they usually plant corn, beans, and squash together. This is a, a process, or a practice, I should say, that's been very important um, for many generations just because of the, the benefits that those, the combination of those three foods will um, provide. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to start cutting up some of the, the peppers, and we will then move on to making the tortillas. All right, so I have my boblano pepper, and in case you aren't aware of the heat um, of, that the poblano pepper contains. Uh, typically these are what you consider a mild heat. Um, one word of caution though, 
you might occasionally get one that's actually a little on the spicier side. Um, so if you're feeding this to your family and you may have people in your family who are sensitive to spicy food, I would probably just taste a little bit of the, the pepper and just to make sure that it's not too spicy. Um, but again, most of these should be mild. So I'm going to start by slicing the pepper in half lengthwise. And I do this because I just like to pull out the stem like so. And I take out all the seeds. And then I'm going to slice my peppers, let's get the seed out, into strips, like so. Try to cut your fingers off. All right, so I've sliced my pollen peppers into thin strips, and now I'm going to slice some of my onion. Um, so depending on how many people you're cooking for, uh, I actually have another pollen pepper that I've already sliced. So I have two poblano peppers, and then um, probably about half of a whole onion, half of a large onion would be sufficient. This is actually one I used yesterday, so I'm just going to go and use part of this as well. Um, I'm only making this for you know, a couple people. I'll have some left over. So um, this is great. If so this is something that you actually want to make ahead, like the night before, um, just throw in a container, and then the next morning just heat it up, have some tortillas, and you have a quick breakfast. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this into some longer strips as well. So, have some onions and my pepperoni peppers. Um, the other thing is I actually did preheat my skillet to medium heat and I'm going to put some avocado oil in it um, just so the stuff doesn't really stick. Um, and I'm going to actually start off by cooking the peppers first because I do want these to kind of get, um, I don't want to say blackened, but just lightly toasted. Um, and then we're going to cook the onions as well, so these are um, basically caramelized. Okay, so I have my skillet heated on medium heat, and now I'm going to add some avocado oil. Just enough to coat the pan. Don't have to put a whole bunch, got deep, deep fat fry in these. And I say that because poblano peppers are, for those of you who don't know, these the poblano pepper is the type of pepper that's used to making uh, chile rellenos. Um, also, the dried form of the poblano pepper is also called the ancho chile. Just a little FYI. So I'm going to start off by throwing my peppers into the skillet. And actually I'm going to turn this up to uh, almost a very high. We do want to start this off on a high heat. This really brings when you cook these and you roast them on a high high heat. This really brings out the flavor. Now you think this doesn't really sound good, but one thing I forgot to mention is not only do we have caramelized onions and the roasted peppers in this dish, but we're also going to add some scrambled eggs. So we're going to have some protein. So this is going to be a filling dish. Um, and on top of the, the protein, we're also going to add some melted Monterey Jack cheese. And there's actually a two, there's actually a couple different ways, possibly more, that you can serve this. Um, so in addition to making the, the rajas, I'm also going to make some refried black beans. Um, so what I've done in the past, um, you can actually take a, a talena roll or any type of like French bread. You layer on layer on some black refried black beans and then the, the rajas with some Monterey Jack cheese. Um, you can serve it like that, or if you have a, a panini press, um, you can actually make kind of like a panini, which it's really good that way. Um, but I'm making it a slightly healthier way um, by making it, uh, just a regular corn, corn taco with the rajas inside. So another word of caution, when you're cooking these peppers, um, they and this is a high temperature, it actually might um, release some capsaicin because there is a trace amount in the peppers. Um, and again, some of the peppers might be spicier than others. Um, so, 
probably not a good idea to have your family in the kitchen unless you're used to this type of thing. But um, otherwise, they'll come in and they'll be gassed and start coughing. Alright, so I'm going to cook this uh, probably for at least five minutes. You can see that. You can't see that either. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to let that sit. I want to kind of lightly toast, or blister I should say, the chile. So there's different ways that you can make this. Some people just add salt. Um, I, I do like to add a little bit of seasoning. So right here I have some cumin, some ground cumin. And then I have some salt and Mexican dried Mexican oregano. I'm just gonna let that cook down for a minute. So let me try and get a shot of this so you can see what this looks like. So you want the peppers to kind of have this um, blistered kind of appearance. It looks, it's, I don't know, let's say it's black, but it's it's darker. And it looks like the skin's coming off. So you do want, that's what you want to look like. Down to the point where I want to add the onions next. Let's go ahead and throw those in there. Now it's important that you let the, the peppers cook um, a little bit longer because they do take a while to soften up. Um, you don't want them to be crunchy when you serve them. So make sure they're nice and tender before you serve them. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of salt. And I don't have measurements for salt, but start off again, start off with the smallest amount and then work your way up depending on how much salt you want in your, your food. You know, some people probably want to keep their sodium levels low. They probably should, but I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to let that cook down for a minute. And I did turn the heat down to about medium. It was on um, close to high but I want, don't want this to cook too fast. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cook down. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my tortillas and my beans. Okay, so while my peppers and my onions are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my tortillas. So. The process of making home tortillas is relatively simple. It's just that you do, it would be helpful if you have a couple of um, specific tools. And one of them is a tortilla press. Um, this is a wooden one. There's different varieties. There's some that are metal. Um, this is just one I just happened to buy because this is all they had. I do like it. It's worked very well over the years. Um, the only thing is you have to, sometimes some of these, like the wood ones, you have to put some type of plastic over it so that way the, the masa doesn't stick to the wood, which is, um, will happen if you don't cover it. So this is what I'm going to use to make my tortillas. So I just have a small glass bowl because I'm only making a few tortillas. I'm not going to make enough for um, a whole family for a big party. So I'm just going to start off by measuring out one cup of masa flour. And it doesn't have to be a, le a level cup because again everything in cooking Latin cooking is approximations, cooking by taste, cooking by texture. All right, and I'm gonna add one, I'm gonna start with about a half teaspoon of salt. I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me, it'll taste good. And then I have a cup of water here that I'm just gonna add about half of it first. And then using my hands, oh, and probably at this point, it's a good idea before you start this, it's a good idea to remove any jewelry you have. Um, that way you don't get any of the, the dough stuck into your um, jewelry. Okay, so go ahead and add a bit more of the water. Now the important thing is you don't want this dough to be too sticky because if you have 
a sticky dough, it's going to stick to the, uh, the tortilla press, even though I have the plastic on it. So don't add all the water at once. Just add a little bit of time. So I have about a quarter cup of the water left, but this actually feels, um, I think, just right at this point. So I'm just going to kind of knead this a little bit, make sure everything's all nice and mixed in. And even, I'm going to taste that a little bit, make sure the salt level's good. It's good for me. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this sit for a minute. And while this is sitting, I'm going to start cutting my peppers and onions uh, for the refried meats. Now I'm going to cut some onions for the refried beans. Um, don't need a whole lot because I'm only going to use one can of um, black beans. Now, sometimes you're in a hurry, and I understand previous a previous video I, I mentioned that I don't use canned goods very often, but beans is one of the exceptions because um, you know they're I think they're pretty safe to eat. I know some foods like tomatoes you probably don't want to eat too many of because of the um, the can light, the chemicals in the can lining can leach into the tomatoes. I think it's called BCA. But yeah, canned beans are relatively safe, and it's a huge time saver because you usually have to soak, soak the beans and um, and cook them. So that's almost like a half day, full day process if you include the soaking time. So I chopped about this is about a quarter cup of, of onions, and then I have one whole jalapeno. Now again, you can de-seed this or just chop it up and throw it in as is if you want some sp a spicier bean. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and de-seed this. Okay, and then I'm going to mince this into small pieces. And I probably should have started the the, re the beans first because these are going to take a while to cook. And I apologize, I'm kind of cooking, cutting this a little sideways. The onions are already killing me, so I might chop my finger off because I'm cutting with one eye. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. I don't mind a little chunk chunk of jalapenos in my beans. <clears throat> so my onions in my jalapenos and right now I have a small saucepan on the stove and I'm gonna it's preheating on medium heat um, I am gonna put a little bit of avocado oil in it and I'm going to saute both the onions and the jalapenos and I'm going to add some onion and I'm sorry some garlic and some cumin for some additional flavor all right so I have my my small saucepan on the stove and I'm gonna add Maybe about three tablespoons of oil, avocado oil, to the pan. And I'm going to throw in my quarter cup of onions. And my jalapenos, de-seeded of course. And I'm going to go ahead and saute this until the onions are translucent and just starting to caramelize. We don't want them like dark brown, but if, if they're light brown, that's, that's good. We do want them soft. Okay, so I'm going to let that cook down for a little bit. And then once that's cooked down, I'm going to then add some garlic, some salt, just a little bit of salt, and some cumin. Um, one thing I do want to call out is you just want to be cautious when using salt. Um, 
especially with canned beans because canned beans do contain a lot of salt. So you probably don't really need to add that much um, when you're making refried beans, um, when you're using canned beans. All right, so it looks like our onions are just about caramelized. They're definitely translucent. So at this point, I'm gonna throw in some garlic. And I have about uh, two small cloves in here. Using my garlic press. And so I'm gonna use my knife and just scrape this off into the onions and jalapenos. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in yeah, maybe a quarter teaspoon of cumin. And then I'm gonna throw in one cup of black beans. You can use pinto beans as well. I just happen to like black beans a little bit more than pinto beans. Um, and if you're using canned beans, this is just my, my preference, but I'll typically will drain the can, the, the water out of the can, and then I'll add a little bit more and swish it around. I'll do that a couple times just to kind of rinse the beans. So once I have my beans in here, I'm just gonna stir them a little bit. And I, I would not add any salt at this point. I would just go ahead and just let everything cook down. Um, after you mash the beans, then go ahead and add a little bit of salt um, after tasting it to see how to check the, the salt level. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this cook for just a little bit. And you probably will want to add just a little bit of water um, sometimes when you get canned beans, they're not cooked enough to the point where you can mash them up um, to make refried beans. So you do want to let them cook for just a little bit. Um, and so I'll probably put in about mm, maybe a quarter cup of water to start off with and see how much, see how that looks. Um, and you can probably see uh, this little, this black skillet right here. This is what I'm going to use to cut, to cook the tortillas. Um, now traditionally in Mexico you would use what's called a comal, which is would be basically like a skillet or like a clay uh, cooking surface that's cooked over a fire. Um, but that's pretty old school. Most people just use their stove now. Um, but I did turn this on a little bit ago because it does take a while to heat up. And I have it on um, about medium high. Uh, so it's, I'm not sure what your stove looks like, but uh, mine's between, mine's about a five right now. Um, so I'm gonna start off there and see how that that works as, as far as heat. I might actually turn it up to six because you want to have a higher temperature. All right, and let's go ahead and check on our our rajas while we're over here. Okay, so our rajas have been cooking on low heat for the last ten minutes or so, and they're looking pretty pretty good. Um, one thing I do want to mention, you might see little things like this. This is actually the skin from the peppers that's coming off. Um, I really don't mind this, but I know sometimes people, they don't want the skins on. So you can actually roast these in your oven first on broil. Um, you just have to keep an eye on them. Um, once they start to turn kind of a, a dark color and the skin's peeling off, you just want to rinse them in cold water and you can just peel the skins right off. And then you can do this part where you cook them in the skillet. Um, again, I, I skip that step because I really don't mind the skins, but um, they can be a little chewy sometimes. So I'm going to add some, about a pinch of ground cumin and generous pinch of salt and give that a stir now as I mentioned earlier you you can cook this with eggs with scrambled eggs so I cracked six eggs into a bowl add a little bit of milk so the eggs are a little fluffier I like fluffy eggs um, I did not add any salt to the eggs since I'm adding salt here in the pan. All right, so I'm going to turn this back on medium heat. And I'm going to go ahead and pour my eggs into the pan. And I'm going to let that cook until the eggs are done. Okay, I almost forgot this part. This is actually... I forgot to put some garlic in here. So I'm going to throw in one large clove of garlic. Hopefully the eggs haven't cooked yet. And I'll give it a stir. The garlic just helps give it a nice, nice flavor.
Normally you'd want to put the, the garlic in um, after the peppers and onions are cooked. Um, many of you are probably aware but garlic does not taste good if it's overcooked. It kind of gets kind of bitter. So that's why I put it in at the very end right before I put the, um, the, eggs, the eggs in with the pepper mixture. So, um, but yeah, so put the, the garlic in once the onions and the peppers are cooked. Let the garlic cook just for like a minute or so and then go ahead and throw the, the eggs in. And let that cook down. All right, the beans have been cooking for about five minutes or so, maybe less. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some water. I have half a cup of hot water in here. So I'll add that to the saucepan. Give this a stir. And I'm just gonna leave this on medium heat and let this simmer for a little bit. Um, my eggs are still cooking. And the, the rajas, you'll probably want to give them a little bit of a stir. Um, just like you're making scrambled eggs, you don't want them to burn to the bottom of the pan. So maybe after a few minutes, um, give the, the rajas and the eggs a stir. Um, the beans, we'll just let those simmer for a little bit because we do want those beans to cook down so they're nice and soft before we mash them. And my comal feels like it's almost ready. So then we can go ahead and get started on our tortillas. All right, so we have our masa dough that's been sitting for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I like to let it sit because sometimes when you add some water, it takes a little bit for the, the flour to kind of absorb the water. So you wanna let it sit before adding any more water or adding more flour, um, just so you can kind of gauge the, the texture of the dough. Um, so you should be able to roll it into about a, maybe a little smaller than a golf, golf ball size. Um, and then we press down on it you might have some some breaks, which is okay. Um, if it if you push down and there's really no breaks at all, you might have a little bit too much water in there. Um, but this one looks like it's pretty pretty good. So I'm just gonna take a few of these Roman balls, and then I'm gonna grab my tortilla press. So again, I put plastic on this so the masa dough does not stick to the wood. And I'll just place my ball in the middle of the tortilla press. Press this down. And then, depending on what type you have, you're gonna have to press the lever. And the more pressure you put down, the thinner your tortilla is going to be. My daughter loves helping with this part. Bless her heart. But sometimes her tortillas are a little too thick for my, my taste. And it should peel off just like so. So that is your tortilla that's ready to go onto the comal or a cast iron skillet. All right, so my rajas are done, all the eggs are cooked. So now the last part of this is I'm going to take some Monterey Jack cheese, and I'm lazy. <laughs> um, you can either, you know, if you have the whole block cheese, you can grate it yourself. Um, <laughs> um, you can either, you know, if you have the whole block cheese, you can grate it yourself. Um, I didn't have any of the gritty on hand or the block, but I did have the slices. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some slices on here. Like so. Once you have your cheese on top of the eggs, then you're gonna go ahead and turn the heat on low, as low as it'll go, and then just cover it with the lid and just let that sit. And in the meantime, we can finish on the beans which as you can see are coming along nicely. And we can finish our tortillas. All right, so I've made about five tortillas on the tortilla press. Um, as you can see, our beans are almost done. I'm probably just gonna add just a little bit more water because we don't want these to cook down and burn to the bottom of the pan. So I want to make sure these beans are nice and, and mushy comes time to smash them. Okay, so those, the beans keep cooking. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my first tortilla on the skillet. Slap it on there. And wait for the magic to happen. Um, now, some of you may have tortilla warmers for whatever reason. Um, but what I like to do, keep it simple. I'll show you my tortilla warmer. So all I do is fold this in half and then wrap it up around the edges so the tortillas stay warm and they continue to they steam a little bit, which makes them soft. Um, sometimes when you take tortillas off the skillet right away, they might feel a little hard. 
um, that's okay. Once you put them in some moon foil and wrap them up, they'll steam a little bit and they'll soften up. So they're kind of like similar to what you're used to for the store-bought tortillas. So once you see the steam start to come off the tortilla, you might want to give it a quick flip and let the other side cook. Um, I actually prefer to have a little bit of brown on my tortillas. This one, you can't really see it. There's just a little tiny bit, but I do want some more. So I'm gonna let this one cook a little bit longer on the first side. Um, so about a minute, minute and a half on each side before you turn it over. Um, it, it really depends on also the heat that you have your, your skillet turned on. Um, so again, mine's about medium, medium temperature, a little higher than medium. Okay, so I do have some brown on the edges, so that's good. So after I flip this tortilla over, I'm gonna let it cook for about one more minute. Um, I just wanna make sure that there's no um, darker spots where the dough is still kind of wet, hasn't cooked all the way through. Um, and sometimes when you're cooking tortillas, it might start to bubble up a little bit, that's fine. Um, if you don't want it to bubble up, you can just take your spatula and just kind of smash it down a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to turn this over, and this one is done. So I can take this tortilla, put it in my tortilla warmer, and then I'll fold the edges. And I create a little package, and I put my tortilla inside here. And I just kind of open it, and then throw in the other tortillas as I make them, and leave the tortillas inside the loom foil until I'm ready to serve them. So let's go ahead and throw this next one on. Oops, this one kind of fell apart. <laughs> I promise I did not take a bite out of the tortilla. All right, so the beans have boiled down to the point where the water, it's not really runny, it's kind of thick, a little viscous-like. Um, and I hate to do this on, um, on camera, but I am going to use a metal potato masher in a nonstick pan. Probably not the best idea, but it works. And I'm eventually going to get rid of these pans anyway because I'm not too crazy about them. Um, and as you can see, I have three tortillas cooking simultaneously on the iron skillet. So while those are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and mash my beans. Um, I, I did turn the heat down on low. While I'm doing this, I do want them to stay warm, but I don't want them to, you know, cook to the point where they they stick to the pan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash these. Um, and as you can see, I'm not really having to put a lot of effort into mashing them because I let them cook for so long that they just basically fall apart, which is exactly what I want. So just kind of go around in circles mash up every little bit as much as possible. It's okay if you have some chunks in there because that'd be perfect. I mean the purpose of this is making something simple, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir. Make sure I got all the... Alright, that looks really good. So at this point you want to taste it see if it needs any additional salt. Um, I did sneak a, a taste off camera. It is actually perfect, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna flip these tortillas over. Oops. And see this nice brown spot right there? That's, that's what I like. Okay, so once the tortillas are done cooking, um, I'm going to go ahead and get a plate out and show you how I plate this particular dish. Okay, so everything is done. My tortillas are all cooked. I ended up with about 10 tortillas in my um, the batch that I made, which again was only one cup of flour, three-fourths a cup of water, and half a teaspoon of salt. So very simple. All right, so I'm going to take some of my tortillas and see how soft and pliable they are. 
All right, so I'm gonna take some of my beans first. And we'll just go ahead and slap these on there, like so. And then take some of my Rajas mixture. Now, there's cheese on this already, but you do have the option, if you want to, um, you can just crumble some more cotica on top. If you don't want to use Monterey Jack, um, because cotica is actually a, um, has a lower fat content, so if you're trying to reduce your, your fat intake, um, you can just omit the Monterey Jack and just use some cotija cheese instead. And I'm gonna try and throw some avocado on here. And some tomatoes from my garden. Cilantro. I know some people don't like it, but I love cilantro. So I'll throw some cilantro on there. And voila! That's our rajas with homemade tortillas and refried black beans. Enjoy! Hey guys, thanks for watching. Now, I'm going to continue to focus on breakfast dishes. Uh, probably for the next week or so, but if there's anything that I've ever made and post on Facebook that you thought looked interesting or delicious, uh, feel free to send me a um, message or just add a comment in the, in the comment section and I'll see what I can do to provide uh, hopefully a recipe and a video. So thanks again for watching, have a great day, and keep it simple.